This is the Leica GS18i High Precision GNSS Receiver. The GS18i is Leica's flagship GNSS receiver, providing users with centimeter level accuracy and some of the latest technology incorporated with data collection. Not only does this receiver have high accuracy positioning, it also has a built-in IMU for tilt compensation, as well as a camera on the side of the receiver for instant photogrammetric image processing and feature extraction. And the best part is all of this happens in real time on the Leica Cap Captivate software. Now to start, I'm simply going to insert a battery into the GNSS receiver and clip the cover back on. Now I can raise the rod up to either 1.8 or 2 meters, whatever preference you have. I like to set this to 1.8 meters, which is equivalent to 5.9 feet. Okay, and then I can press and hold the power button until all the lights turn on. Now to connect your GS18i to Leica Captivate, you'll start by going to settings, you'll select connections, and then the GS connection wizard. You'll then select your GPS, so I'm using a GS18, I'll click next. I will be using a Bluetooth connection, next, hit search, in which case you'll find your GNSS receiver's number and I can see here that this bottom one matches the bottom of the receiver that I have so I can hit next and then finish. Connected to GS sensor. And there we go, now we are connected to our GS18i. Now with any GNSS receiver, we need to connect to a base station. This could be a second GNSS receiver that is static in one location, or you can use Ntrip to connect to a local cores network to receive corrections over the internet. There are two ways to connect to the internet. The first would be to load up a hotspot on your phone and connect your controller to that hotspot. Now using the CS30, it's very simple. All I have to do is go to the desktop and I can then select an internet network. So I'm actually at home right now so I'm just connected to my home Wi-Fi but if you have your phone's hotspot on you can just connect to your hotspot. Another option is to subscribe to Hexagon SmartNet. In this case Hexagon will send you a SIM card that you can then connect to the internet with so you don't need to find a Wi-Fi connection or use your phone's hotspot. All right now I'm going to create a new job for this project. I'll tap on the name and I'll just call this GS18i home. Okay for creator I'll just put my name, all right. Now in the next tab, we have coordinate system. So I'm going to select my coordinate system, which is going to be Michigan South. I'll say okay. And I can go through the code list and relate this to another job, but everything else looks fine to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit store. All right, and I've now created this new job. Very good. Now I wanna go ahead and utilize Ntrip to gain corrections and get RTK positioning. I've gone over how to do that in previous videos, but once you set up your profiles and everything that you need to connect through Ntrip, you're gonna click on this little phone with an at symbol and we're going to start RTK stream. This will connect us to the Ntrip caster. RTK initialize. All right, now we have a fixed reading. Now everything is set up, we can go ahead and start to measure points with our GNSS receiver. Now with the GS18i, we do have the IMU that is giving us tilt compensation. And so this little symbol right here is our GNSS receiver. Having this green bubble at the top here means that the tilt compensation is active and we are getting corrections for our position in terms of holding the rod still. This means that when I'm surveying, I don't need to hold my rod plumb at all times and I'm able to hold it in any orientation because I know that the IMU is going to correct my position as though I was holding the rod plumb. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is disable the tilt compensator. So I'm gonna go into settings. I'll go to GS sensor and tilt compensation. I will then uncheck the use tilt compensation option. And so when I hit okay, the tilt compensation has stopped. So I've created a separate job called GS18i tilt. Uh, this will just be used for this test. So I'll go ahead and hit measure. And here is the GS GNSS receiver symbol. As I move around, you can see the graphic stays still. That's because there's no compensating happening for any tilt. Okay, I will hold this point right here. Everything looks good. I'm gonna hold it plumb and we'll measure. Point stored. All right, perfect. The point has been stored. Now let's re-enable tilt compensation. So we'll go back, I'll hit settings, GS sensor, tilt compensation, and we'll enable tilt compensation. Okay, we'll go back to measure. And now to initialize tilt compensation, all I have to do is move the rod like this. So now you can see the little graphic when I move my rod, it's actually animating where the tilt is happening. Now that arrow that you see, that's the location of the camera. We'll look at that later on in the video, but for right now, you can see that there is a decent amount of compensating that is happening. And let's just see how accurate it will be when I measure this point again. Make sure we're on the point. And I'm going to lead in the rod like this. So let's take one measurement. Point stored. Now let's lean in the other direction. Let's lean like this. 
stored. And just for fun, I'm gonna do one more. I'm gonna lean as much as I can. Let's let's do something like this. Like this is pretty extreme, honestly. Measure. Point stored. Okay, nice. Let's take a look at these coordinates. I'll go back. We'll tap on the job view and edit data. And so point number one is the initial point that we took. This is the point without tilt compensation. But looking at point number two, it looks like we have about five hundredths of error in the northing, about a tenth in the easting, and eight hundredths in the elevation. Point number three, we've got seven hundredths in the northing, about three hundredths in the easting, and it looks like we're right on in the elevation, like 100% to the thousandth. Nice. And point number four, which was the extreme tilt that I did, we got about a tenth in the northing, about one hundredths in the easting and only three hundredths in the elevation. So while using the tilt compensator on the GS18i, I would anticipate at most one tenth. In some areas it could be as little as a few hundredths, but that's something to be expected from GNSS receivers. This isn't just because of tilt compensation, this is just the nature of GNSS receivers and satellite positioning. So to be able to bend down as much as I did and still be within a tenth of a foot is incredible and something that I'm very impressed with. Now let's use the GS18i with the Leica Captivate software to collect some data. So I can start right here on this sidewalk where we're gonna be doing point number one and the rod height here at 5.906, which is 1.8 meters. I can also add in a new code, so I'm going to call this sidewalk. And I'm gonna change this to start a new line because this is a line. Okay, I'm happy with this. And again, I don't have to hold the rod still. I can hold it like this and measure. All right, we've stored that point. I'm gonna survey the other side. I'm gonna switch this over to another sidewalk line and measure. Point stored. Okay, now I'm gonna come up here, another point here. Point stored. Okay, I'll come on to the other side. We'll switch this back to sidewalk one, measure. Point stored. Okay, this right here is still sidewalk one, so we'll go ahead and measure. Point stored. Point stored, come on this side. This is sidewalk two. And I feel like leaning today. I don't know. Let's lean the rod a little bit. Point stored. It's still going to store it correctly. I'll come down and finish up this sidewalk line. Point stored. We'll go back up this driveway. We'll switch this back to sidewalk one. Measure. Point stored. Let's shoot another one right here. Point stored. And look at how fast I can survey with this tilt compensator on. Point stored. And not have to worry about leveling the rod every single time I want to take an observation. Got a bit of an arc here, so I'm gonna call this a three-point arc. Okay. We'll measure. Point stored. Now when I'm looking at this, I got some landscaping in the way, and it's gonna be kind of tough for me to hold this plum. But again, not a problem, I can just hold it like this. And as you can see on the right side of the screen, like a Captivate can calculate where that rod is supposed to be, even if I'm not holding the rod plumb. Okay, and measure, and we'll do one more to finish up the arc, measure. Point stored. And we'll start another line here. Okay, I'm gonna hold my rod like this. Point stored, point stored, point stored. And now I can go towards the front door. Okay, I'm gonna come closer here. This is going to be the next shot that I take. Point stored. Sidewalk one, and capture this point right here, measure. Point stored. Now I am gonna run into a problem here. As I get closer to the house, I lose my RTK lock. Well, that's because there's a canopy over the front door. And when you block the connection of the GS18, or any GNSS receiver for that matter, you're not gonna get the RTK corrections that you need for high accuracy positioning. So what do we do? How do we solve this? Well, that's when we use the built-in camera in the GS18i to do photogrammetry. Now in order to use the built-in camera, I'm going to get out of the measure menu. And on the bottom here, I'm going to go over to GS Imaging. So I'll select GS Imaging. And the first option here, Capture Image Group. And now we're going to load the camera. So just give it a minute. And there we go. The camera has now loaded. You can see there's my camera that I'm working on. If I rotate here, I can see everything that the GS18i can see. Now that I've moved around a little, the tilt compensator is back on and active. And now all I'm going to do is capture imagery along the entrance of my house. And using photogrammetry, I'm going to be able to select positions on the imagery and find the coordinates of points that I would need. So here we can see a live view of what the GS18 can see. And I'm gonna come over on this side and start to collect images. We'll start 
start to collect images. And the beautiful thing is I can just walk. I don't have to stop every time I wanna take an image. It will automatically take imagery for me. Okay, now it's going to process all of those images, transfer them, and it will optimize them. All right, and there we go. We have, looks like 29 images in this image group. And now I can just store all those images. Image group stored. All right, we've stored that, nice. So now we can go back and I'm going to select the second option, measure in images. And I'll open up this image group. And now I can select points that I wasn't able to measure using my GNSS receiver through the images that it captured. So for example, I wanna capture this point right here, which is the start of the porch. So I can click right there, maybe a little up, right there. Okay, we'll hit measure. Then we'll go to the next image. I'll zoom in here and I like this spot right here so I'll add that next it looks like there's six images our quality is within five hundredths and we'll add this one as well okay so now I've got a bunch of different images that I use looks like seven images were used as long as you're using at least three or four images you should have enough data to calculate the coordinates of this point so I'm going to change this to point number 20 enter I'm going to call it porch that looks good and now we can store Store. I'm super impressed with the fact that I can go straight from taking images on the GNSS receiver, processing the photogrammetry in like a Captivate, and selecting the points all while I'm still in the field. If you guys would like to learn more about the GS18i GNSS receiver, then be sure to check out Leica's website down in the description. If you enjoy surveying and geospatial content, then be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Now, if you want to learn how to do tilt compensation with a total station, then you're definitely going to want to check out this video about the Leica AP20.